All right, so I have some uh, data, test data here from a class, and I have all my students down the left. I have my questions across the top. I filled in the whole thing with ones, and I added zeros for all the ones they got wrong. That way I can average across, and I'll get the uh, their each student's average here. Now I can also average the column. That'll tell me the average on the each individual question, so that's useful. But say you want to dig a little deeper. You want to look some... Uh, um, look at some specific types of questions. So let's say um, I kind of look at, I want to take the average of um, maybe a certain number of questions are on a certain topic, let's say, or a certain objective. And actually questions, I'm not just making this up right now, so number one, uh, number three, number eight, and number eleven all have to do with the same topic, let's say forces. I'll have to talk about uh, forces or calculating a force. I, if I take the average of those specific cells That'll tell me basically how well, I should make this a percent, um, that'll tell me how well they did on forces. All right, so they, this person got 100% on forces. But I want to know that for everybody. So again, I can take that, fill down, and that tells me how well they did on forces. So I can look at this and say, okay, uh, let's see, Abby, Frank, uh, Mary, Nancy, Peggy, they're all doing pretty well on forces, but I need to make sure I help out Dan, needs a little help, Greg, Hank, um, they need some help on forces because that question got wrong. Or maybe you need, don't even do it by topic. Maybe you do it by those are all the application questions and you want to look at um, your Bloom's taxonomy, your your knowledge questions, your remembering questions, your um, synthesis questions. You look at specific ones within that to kind of look at, okay, of these types, how do they do? Of these types, how do they do? Maybe I threw some um, standardized test questions in there uh, and I wanted to pick out those and look at the percentages. So we can look at that too. Um, also, I'd like to use look at some uh, overall class statistics. So let's say I want to get the max, uh, the class average, the min, and then some A's, B's, C's, etc. I always like to look at the number of those to kind of get a feel for um, where my bell curve is at. So if I want to take the max, well, guess what? The function is called max. All right, so I take the maximum number, and I can do individual numbers, or I can just select all of my class averages, all of my student averages here, uh, and I get my maximum is 93%. Uh, my average equals average. I'll take this list and get an average of 75. Great, right where I want it. Um, and if I want the min, equals min. Take the same list. And that tells me, oh, all right, the min was 47%. So if I look at, I want to look at two... 47. All right, that was that was Hank. So I need to talk to Hank a little bit, make sure he's doing all right, and see where how he needs help. Um, but I like looking at the number of you know, so looking at my distribution of of grades here. How many A's do I have? And I can count them out myself, but um, I like to make this once and have that do it for me. So to get the number of 90s, I want to use something. It's probably more than one way to do this, but I'll use something called count if, which basically says count how many of these are in the 90s. That's what I'm telling Excel to do. If I do count if, I need to tell it the range. Um, so I'm going to show it this range of numbers. All right. And then I'm going to do count if it's uh, 90 or better. So I'm going to do, and the criteria you put in quotes, I'm going to do greater than 0.895, end quote. Those have to be in quotes. Um, as long as it's greater than 0.895, which would be 90 or better, 90% or better, Count me, there's one of those. All right, so I want to do a similar one uh, for the 80s. So I'll do count if, uh, again, the same range. Uh, so my response is there. Uh, the criteria, I'll open the quotes, greater than, now this is, I want 80s or better, so I'm going to do greater than 0.795 because I want 80 to be included in that. Um, end quote. So I have eight Bs. Um, if I noticed, this is actually, I said greater than 0.795. Well, that would include the A's too. So I need to change that. I actually want to take it and do, well, I can do the 80s. I'll do minus however many A's there are. That'll tell me the number of, um, the number of A's. There are some, sorry, the number of B's. I have seven B's in there. I'll do the same thing for C's. Equals count if the same range comma, and then question mark, this is greater than 0.695, because I want 70 or better, end quote. I'll close the parentheses here, and I'm going to minus and subtract um, 
my B's, I subtract also my A's. I get two C's. Uh, and I'll do for 60's equals count if my range this is go point um, sorry comma so then this will be open quote greater than point five nine five end quote close minus my that's all of them greater than 60 so I want minus my C's minus my B's minus my A's and that gives me five D's um, and this would be anything lower. So actually for this I'm going to go basically 50 or lower. So it's basically anyone that's failing. So equals count if the same range. You're sensing a pattern here. Um, but this I want basically anything lower than 60. So I'm going to say less than 0 0.60. Um, you don't really need a 0 in there but less than 60 percent. Close my quotes. Close the parentheses. So there's one person that failed. 5 D's two C's, seven B's, um, and 90 A's. That kind of shows me the distribution. I didn't really have a lot of C's, so this clears, that shows me, looking at this, showing that there's a distribu distribution here of there's more people that really knew it, and there's some people that really didn't. If I just look like my max, min, and average, it looks like, oh, average is 75%. That's great, right in the middle of the pack, middle of C, that's where I want it. But actually, if I look at this data, it shows me that I actually have a lot of B's, a lot of people at the top here, not many in the middle, and a decent number of people at the bottom. So there's a clear distinction between either you knew it or you didn't know it. So that could tell me, I can start asking questions, okay, why was there that discrepancy? Why was there nobody in the middle? Um, was there a clear concept that you that clicked or didn't click? And there's a big difference there. So that gives me a lot of information, a lot more information about uh, my class that I can work with. Um, and I can always, I can show this too if I highlight that and I go to my chart wizard right here and I want to bar chart of that, or columns. You go to next. Uh, let's get a simple bar chart. Yes, yes. I don't, I'm not going to label it right now, just for interest of time. But right here, I can look at visually my A's, my B's, my C's, my D's, my failing. Um, so right here, sometimes I'll go to my class and kind of tab over so no one sees anyone's name and give them the statistics. We'll open this up and say, you know, this is this many A's, this many B's. We'll talk about why. We'll talk about what was difficult, what was not. Um, but it's a good place to start talking about uh, this data and it's just a good way to start, an easy way to start talking about how, you know, what information can you get out of this and how is that going to affect my teaching, which is what we're trying to do. Right, so I, how can I teach better by using this data? Nice part is, now that I've made this for this test, I'm done. Now when I get to my next test, I can do this. I can start over, say, all right, start filling this with ones again. Fill my ones down, my ones across, resave it as a different file. Now this is my chapter two test, and my averages are still there. Um, I'll have, maybe have to change my, you know, uh, individual looking at types of questions, but all the max is there, the average is there, the mins. Uh, I have everybody's getting an A right now because they have 100%. And once I set it up once, I can use it again and again and again and tweak here and there for different types of questions. So that's how I attack data analysis. Um, if you have any other questions or, or specific things you'd like to see, uh, let me know in the comments. And hope this helps.